Hello, I'm Robert Grant. I am a Professor of Management at Bocconi University in Milan. And I'm JC Spender, and I'm long retired, uh, but I wander around, especially to SMS conferences, uh, and I'm writing a lot about uh, stuff in the field. So the, um, the award that uh, JC and I received is a little bit unusual in that uh, it was for two papers. Um, it was, so it was a, a joint award for two papers. But I think what we wanted to focus on primarily was the actual issue, the special issue in 1996, Knowledge in the Firm, where both those papers were included and of which we were the, uh, we were the editors. So in terms of the, the, the background to this, despite the fact that both that JC and I come from very different backgrounds. Um, JC will talk a little bit about his background. My background very much as a, a, a microeconomist uh, converted uh, to, to, to strategy. Um, but we both felt at that time was that this was a very interesting period in strategic management where the concept of knowledge, which you know, of course, has been, been there, you know, from information systems, issues of uncertainty, um, uh, innovation, you know, all those, all those areas. But one which we felt really ought to come to the, to the center of strategic management. So what we set out to do was to try to, to introduce some of what we felt was some very interesting work going on at that time. And I think what characterized that issue, which, uh, um, and I think virtually all the papers in that issue have been pretty highly, pretty highly cited. Uh, uh, one of the papers by uh, Gabriel Solansky received the, uh, 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 the prize for best paper you know, several years before, before, before ours did, yeah. <laughs> um, what characterized that issue was that it was primarily young, young scholars. Um, who were doing some very interesting uh, work, and um, you know, as, as, as you mentioned, a, a couple of them yeah, uh, published mean, the papers before they'd actually received their doctoral right. neither, awards. Right, neither Melissa Appleyard nor Gabby Solansky had actually finished their PhDs at the time this paper, uh, their papers were published in this journal. So we, we were, and, and I think remain very uh, pleased that we were able to include the work of some younger and unknown scholars. Uh, and the knowledge idea sort of opened up, opened up the field to some very different kinds of discussions. Uh, of course, knowledge as, as a kind of central concept uh, had been put into place with, um, with Hayek's 1945 paper. Uh, so it had been circling around in the, in the background of the field without anybody trying to grasp it. And now, whereas uh, Rob, uh, is a microeconomist, uh, self-confessed microeconomist. Um, I'm sort of more of an amateur philosopher. And my coming into the strategy field uh, was a feeling that the construction of a strategy is the construction of a universe of meaning and practice. Uh, so I was uh, somewhat considered as being part of the uh, cognition field or the cognitive term in strategy. Um, that was sort of more or less where I was heading, but it wasn't quite where I was heading. So um, I was coming from a very different direction, uh, thinking about the construction of meaning, and Rob, I think, is uh, thinking much mm -hmm. more about the construction of advantage. Mm -hmm. So I think what really turned me on to uh, um, a, a knowledge-based uh, approach was seeing this as an alternative to the dominant theory of the existence of the firm, which was very much uh, a transaction cost approach. Uh, and then once you would see, view the firm as a knowledge processing, knowledge integration uh, institution, then that led to some, some very interesting implications. Implications for organization structure, uh, implications for centralization, decentralization, implications for competitive advantage, particularly uh, uh, providing a much better basis, I think, for the, for the uh, 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 wide, widely popular concept of organizational capability. So those kinds of things 
I think that uh, uh, by essentially, and I think this you know coming down to to, to, to my own my own paper, um, was really trying to put together and synthesize a number of the contributions that had, that had been made at that, that time to provide, in a way, a better platform in terms of, 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 of directing research into, uh, into, into some of those phenomena. And when we look at what has uh, happened in the sort of the knowledge part of the strategy field, um, clearly uh, our issue uh, helped establish uh, this tradition. So uh, the issue and the papers within it and uh, Rob's paper and my paper are quite highly cited. Um, but the, their longer term impact um, is, is rather less clear. Um, it's clear that there's been some kind of, of fragmentation. Uh, so on the one hand, we have a tradition that's sort of moved into the idea of knowledge as a form of capital. Um, and the idea of knowledge as a form of assets. Um, and this tradition is very strong in the sense that it's very easy to understand. Uh, my concern is that uh, introducing the term knowledge into that tradition uh, obscures rather than clarifies uh, the tradition. Uh, in, in my particular paper, in the special issue, uh, the word dynamic figures in the title uh, because I think both Rob and I felt that talking about knowledge would be a way of, of, of introducing a more dynamic way of thinking about, um, about the way businesses were constructed. So Rob's emphasis uh, then and subsequently has been about integration as a dynamic process that leads to the creation of value. Um, my paper was uh, much less useful in that respect. Um, and I have resisted reading the paper because I was un unhappy with it for a number of reasons. Uh, I, I uh, felt that there was some kind of central point that I was missing. Uh, and the work that I've done uh, subsequently has been in a way to fill uh, the blank space in the middle of that. But the, the paper itself, uh, when I read it today, looks like a manifesto for trying to introduce knowledge as a move towards a dynamic theory of the firm. Um, so when we have organizational capabilities or dynamic capabilities or organizational routines, uh, I think that what they have the potential to do is to introduce a dynamic a fundamental dynamism into thinking about the firm, uh, which is too often absent. Uh, and so I think that that was in many ways the sort of subtext of our, of our issue. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, you know, the issue that you're, you're looking at, JC, you know, is you know, managers are right at the center. And that uh, you know, the, 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 the managerial problem of action in the face of uncertainty you know, it's a it's a very difficult uh, issue to really get a get get a handle on. I think you know the 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 the, the aspects of this that I, that that I've looked at. There, I think I'm more positive in terms of uh, subsequent developments. And as if I look at the developments, particularly in understanding what's going on within the firm, that um, I think there's been you know quite terrific advances in terms of looking at issues of coordination, looking at issues of integration. The role of uh, 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 mod modularity, uh, uh, the role of interfaces uh, uh, within the firm, and, and I, I see some quite, a, quite you, know, you know very exciting work that's happened over the how long is it? Right, fifteen years or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's ten, it, ten years, I think. Yeah. since we started work on that. And even here at, the, at, the, at this conference, uh, um, we're, we're we're in Madrid, by, by the way, for the SMS conference. Um, you know, again, I think that uh, that the, the, a lot of that, a lot of the stuff that was in that uh, uh, special issue is, is is bearing fruit now. I mean, um, my concern is that we still. Uh, lack a number of key notions. Uh, we still have no theory of profit. Uh, we still cannot answer Coase's 1937 questions about why firms exist. Um, 
Today, I, I, I feel that the answers to Coase's questions can only come from a dynamic view of the firm. And that one of the reasons why microeconomics, and even if we take the, uh, as it were, the post cosian uh, advances of transaction cost theory, principal agent theory, nexus of contracts, property rights, etc., these kind of post cosian microeconomic moves, uh, they only work when they're dynamic. Okay, as soon as they're regarded, the, as soon as they've sort of fitted into our conventional positivist methodology, they lose their magic. So I, I, I felt at the at time, though I was very unclear uh, at the time, 94, 95, 96, that period, uh, I feel much more confident now that the fundamental challenge that uh, strategy theory presents us with is coming up with a dynamic concept of the firm, a value creating, profit generating, uh, dynamic uh, process. So, you know, part of this is the move towards strategy as practice, process view, etc. So, anything that we can do to introduce a fundamentally dynamic uh, attitude, aesthetic, uh, into, into the discipline is excellent. And I, and I, I think both of us feel uh, that we took a useful step towards that uh, with constructing the issue for which uh, we were generously awarded the Dan and Mary Lou Shindell Prize. Mm. So, there's more to do. <laughs> there's, there's more to do. Um, and, and we felt at the time, and, we, and I think still feel, that a knowledge-grounded uh, approach uh, can give us some ins insights into strategic phenomena uh, which are not otherwise accessible. Uh, and it's uh, very challenging, and I think the temptations to fall back into using knowledge in a static sense, uh, these temptations are, are very severe and difficult to resist. Okay, I've, I've got nothing to add. <laughs>